Sunrise in Iraq's southern marshes. For thousands of years, it's been home to a unique mix of birds and fish, animals and plants. The culture of the people who live here can be traced back to ancient Mesopotamia. But in only 30 years, much of it has been destroyed. Saddam Hussein drained the marshland to almost nothing in the 1990s after the war with Iran. Almost half of it has been restored. But dams, drought, and rising temperatures have thrown off the delicate balance. Ahmadi Hussein al Batat can barely see anymore. He doesn't know how old he is, but he remembers when the water was so clear you could drink it. After that, we had to dig wells, and the water was green. That's why it damaged our eyes. Dams in Turkey and Iran stopped the seasonal flooding that the marshes relied on. Severe drought made it worse. This part of the marshes was reflooded after Saddam Hussein was toppled. But water levels were so low that three years ago, it was so dry you could walk across it. The water's coming back now, but it's saltier. Rice, a traditional crop, won't grow here anymore. Instead of the traditional barbel and bass, the government introduced a fish called tilapia that can tolerate salt water. No one here wants to eat them. Life here is simple and hard. The days revolve around the water buffalo and taking care of the children. Azam Alwash helped persuade the Marsh Arabs to smash the barriers here and reflood part of the land in 2003. It's all interconnected. Um, and therefore, if we want to address the health of the marshes for the long term, the health of agriculture in Iraq, the health of agriculture even in Syria and Turkey, uh, we need to address the entire basin. And we need to address it together. These marshes are on a migratory bird route between Siberia and Africa. Because of warmer winters, the flamingos are coming earlier every year. Just one symptom of change in the life of Iraq's unique and threatened marshes. Jane Arath, Al Jazeera, in Iraq's southern marshes.